is uh, A.W. Tozier who said, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. What comes to our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Let me ask you something. When we sing that phrase, I know that he is good. I know that God is good. Do you believe that? That he is good? You know, the Bible says that the Lord is always good. You ever heard somebody say, well, he is good all the time? Well, that's where they get that. The Lord is always good. He is always loving and kind. And his faithfulness goes on and on to each succeeding generation. So God really is good all the time. Amen? And it's not just that he does good things for us. It's his character. It's who he is. God is good. Not believing that, or sometimes we as Christ followers forgetting that, you know, can have some pretty negative consequences for sure. When you and I don't believe that God is good, then we can become pretty pessimistic about the future. Are you with me? I mean, David tells us in Psalm uh, 27 that there is a direct correlation between the hope and the goodness of God. Verse 13 says this, David said, I would have despaired. He says, I would have, I would have been desperate. I would have been in total despair unless I had believed that I'd see the goodness. There's that word again. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So anytime you and I begin to doubt or forget how good God really is, we're going to become pessimistic about all the things going on around us and uh, uh, we're going to lose hope because hope is based on the goodness of God. And that's what David is telling us here. And he's like, man, there'd be no hope at all if, if God was not a good God. I mean, we would be up the creek without a paddle. That's basically what he's saying. But David says, I do know, though, that God is good. So I have hope. So if you, you and I ever stop doubting the goodness of God and singing about it, like we have this morning, if we ever forget the goodness of God in our lives, then we are going to live in despair. We're going to live without hope. We're going to become pessimistic about all the stuff that's going on and around us. I mean, you look at our what's happening right now in our nation today, all the division, all the tension, all the ongoing problem, racism, uh, injustice, hate. It would be easy for all of us to wonder, where's the hope? If we didn't understand, just like David, about the goodness of God. And you know what? Uh, I would like to reflect for us uh, as a church family today on uh, what has happened in our nation this last few weeks, in our country. You know, we, one of our values here at Brandy Oil is we're relevant and we want to talk about it. And uh, we want you to know our leadership and our staff, we're all in unity on this. As we reflect on what happened to George Floyd in, in Minneapolis, man, we are grieved. You know, this, this still is happening to our brothers and sisters in the 21st century. And uh, was the police officer at fault? You bet. I mean, it is clear, really, the police officer's fault. Now, let me, let me say this. Are, um, are there some bad police officers in the world? Yes, without a doubt. Let me ask you this. Does that mean all police officers are bad? No, of course not. I mean, there's some bad pastors in this world, too. You know? There's some bad individuals in every profession. So this morning, as I take a moment here to address this as a church family... Uh, about some of the things that we can do about racism. We all want to make a difference. But just know this, I'm not talking about, you know, all just our police officers. This is a talk about you and me, all right? And where our hearts are when it comes to doing something about it. You know, because here's what I know, 
Uh, I mean, sitting right here first service was the chief of police. I spent some time with him this week, and I see his heart. And, and I, I just get it. I, I just know that there are many who attend our church and other churches in this community. Uh, they went into that profession because they actually love justice, because they care, because they honestly want to make a difference. So you don't have to choose sides, right? Amen? We have some wonderful uh, law enforcement people uh, right here in our own community who love Jesus, and love the Lord, and who are wholeheartedly against racial injustices. And I know uh, at the same time, this is your heart as well because you're an amazing church family and you love the Lord and you care about racial injustices. You know, a couple weeks ago, we took a moment just to pause in our service and to recognize injustice and to pray a prayer of repentance over our nation. But for the next few minutes, I want you to hear the heart of the leadership here at Brandywine, and I believe it's your heart too, and what we as Christ followers can do. What can we do to make a difference concerning this ongoing problem of racism? And uh, I know mo most of you are saying, yeah, I want to do something, but maybe some of you are like, I don't know what to do. Well, let me speak to that. In Micah 6, chapter 6, verse 8, it says, the Lord God has told us what is right and what he demands. And this is what he says. See that justice is done. Let mercy be your first concern and humbly obey your God. So one of the first things that we need to do is ask the Lord to help us as a church family to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. And we need to be united in one as we do that. Paul said this in, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If just one person hurts, all of us should hurt. Uh, you know, we have uh, black brothers and sisters in Christ in our own congregation. And if one of them hurts, we all hurt. Amen? Uh, Paul goes on to say in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. We are to grieve with those who grieve. And we know that injustice grieves the heart of God, therefore it ought to grieve our heart as Christ followers. And God says, if just one person in this world has ever denied justice, that none of us should, uh, should ignore uh, that, ignore them. And, and the situation, the Bible says, Open your mouth on behalf of those unable to speak for the legal rights of all the dying. That verse implies to anyone whose life has been treated by prejudice and oppression, not just the unborn who can't defend themselves for death, but the next verse tells us to plead the cause of the poor and needy. In other words, we can't be silent when injustice happens. And uh, we just want you to know as a church, this is not just something that we harp on during when everybody else gets upset about it. This is just part of our DNA. This is who we are all year long, all right? And by the way, should you ever see the battle of racism as a battle of politics, then you're pretty messed up. You know, if that's your thinking, then you've made politics an idol. The battle of racism is not a battle of the left versus the right. The battle, it's a battle of the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of evil. Amen. And have you noticed over these past few months with how this whole COVID thing has caused uh, really to bring out the worst in people? And that's not by accident. I mean... The, the acceleration of hatred and bigotry and violence and division and, and poor behavior. That's not by coincidence. All the weirdness that we've had here with COVID the last couple months, you know what? Fear brings out the worst in people. Bigotry and violence. And now, now Jesus taught us that using violence to end violence would never work. 
And no matter how upset we would become about injustice, that we, we can only defeat evil by doing what God tells us to do. In Romans 12, 21, what does he say? Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Oh, there it is again. We're to overcome evil with good. The number one goal for you and I as Christ followers is to become more and more like Jesus, right? And you're saying, well, who is he and what, what was he like? Well, you can find that out by reading the fruit of the Spirit. It's supposed to be in us and he in us. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. There it is again. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Goodness. So, and kindness. So, what, what are some practical ways and things that we as a church family can do to make a difference in this battle of racism? God says we're to overcome evil with good. So, how do we overcome this evil with good? Well, let me give you some practical ways before we leave and worship here again and have communion. Just four ways to overcome evil with good to help the healing and stop injustice. Something we can do as Christ followers, as a church united together. Number one, the first thing, if you're following along in your notes, is this. We can admit that racism is real. We can admit that this thing exists, that it's real, even today. It's important to realize that just because you haven't seen racism doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, because it does. It's still very much a part of our world here in 2020, whether it be uh, in uh, Hancock County or in Indiana or around the world. And just because you haven't seen it, just because you haven't been affected by it yourself, doesn't mean that it hasn't affected a lot of other people, people that we love. Um, so we have to acknowledge that racism is real. And I think you know, I think what happens is that we tend to think that our experience is the same um, as everyone else's, <laughs> you know? But that's just not true. So the bottom line is we can't be a part of a solution to a problem that we don't acknowledge exists. Amen? We have to acknowledge it, and we have to acknowledge that this evil still exists. And we need to talk about it. We need to talk about it in our homes. We need to talk about it with our children. And through the peace plan here at Brandywine, we've got some resources for you to do that. If you want to talk to your children about how everyone is, that we will make contact with in our, with our eyes, wherever you are in this world, everyone was created in the image of God. Everyone. And he loves everyone. And therefore, we are to love everyone. Have, so we got some great material if you, if you parents want to use that. But it starts with admitting that racism is real. Number two, the second thing we can do is we can listen. We can listen. When, when was the last time, let me ask you this, when was the last time you intentionally built a relationship with someone who was of a different color or ethnic group than you? When was the last time you were intentional about that? You see, some of the most powerful moments in life happen outside your relational comfort zone. And so I just want to encourage you to take a risk, stretch yourself, and out of your own comfort zone, and build a relationship with someone of different color or ethnic group, you know, if you're not used to doing that. Build a relationship. Ask them the questions on racism and how it's impacted their life. And here's what's going to happen. When you begin to build a relationship with somebody that's been affected by it, you're going to, the light bulb is going to go on. It's like, oh, my gosh, this really does happen. This is, this is part of their life, you know? So it's caring enough to ask and caring enough to listen, caring enough to feel someone else's pain. So number one, we have to admit that it's real, that it's evil. Call it what it is. It's evil. It's an abomination to God. And then number two, listen to, to someone who's hurting. Build that relationship and find out. See it. And number three, what we can do is you can pray. I know some people are saying, do more than pray, act. But yes, act, but prayer 
is powerful. Amen? You know, as we go into personal prayer, this is where God begins to work in our heart. And we begin to see things that we didn't see before, you know, that might be there. And as we pray, if we pray a prayer like, God, search my heart, reveal anything that's not right. Uh, prayer. You can join us tomorrow night online with the community prayers. We pray about racial uh, reconciliation for our nation. You can, you can join us at the courthouse plaza as we take a stand. Uh, and this is, gonna, this is Unite to Prayer next Saturday at noon. It's churches coming together. I love this. It's, it's churches in our community coming together. It's a prayer movement that's coming together to pray for the healing of our nation. And so, and then number four, Number four, you can love. You can love like Jesus loved you. You can love like Jesus loves you. That's how we're to love one another. What does the Bible say? Hatred stirs up con conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. That's what love does. Love dispels anger. Love drives out all fears, love forgives, love heals. I mean, this is where it's at, folks. So as a church, here's what we're going to do, all right? We're going to acknowledge that racism is wrong, that it's evil, and it breaks the heart of God, therefore it breaks Brandywine's heart. We're going to listen to people. We're going to build relationships. We're going to hear their stories. We're going to love like Jesus loves. And we're going to continue to look into these people's eyes that we maybe you've never built a relationship with and begin to feel their pain and, and cry with them. And, you know, um, you may not understand. We will never understand. But you don't have to understand to hurt with somebody. Isn't that true? Just say, hey, I want you to know I'm here with you. I love you. And you matter, and I notice, and I'm listening. I'm listening. This morning, as a church family, we're going to continue to take a stand with our brothers and sisters in Christ of all colors. And we're going to continue to partner with inner city churches like we have through the years. And we're going to... Uh, we're going to look different than the world, amen? We're going to act different than the world. We're going to love different. We're going to take a stand with them. We will do what's right. We will act justly. We will love mercy. And we will walk humbly with our God, amen? Let's pray together. Would you stand with me? Father, help us to make you known. God, we pray that as a church family that that you would empower us to make a difference in this world, light shining into darkness, standing up for those who are unjustly abused, seeking justice, showing mercy, loving as we've been loved by you, just like that. And we recognize that. That is true that all men were created equal. And may the world look on and know that we are followers of Jesus Christ today by the way we love one another. And we love everyone, always. Thank you, Father, for a wonderful church family saying, I want to be a part. I want to take a stand. And Father, as we continue to just lift up the name of Jesus, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your anointing that's going to be on us to be a light to a dark and depraved generation that just desperately needs examples of what Jesus looks like. Help us to be more like you in Jesus' name. Amen.